Hey everybody, that's right, it is Odin and we are back. Today we are going to be playing the Beholder 2 beta. That's right, it just popped up on Steam, I guess this weekend, and I was like, holy shit, because I have the first Beholder, but I haven't played it yet. <laughs> I don't know why, like I watched a few people play the first one and I thought, man, this is really cool, and I grabbed it at one point, but for one reason or another I didn't play it. Uh, but I know that I would love it if I did, so <laughs> when I saw the Beholder 2 beta, I was like, man, I gotta play this shit. So this is how it opens up right here. So this is a blind run. I've, I've just opened it up. And uh, you just want to make it clear that this is a beta. There's going to be bugs. Uh, so that's what's going on. So let's go ahead and click play. All right. Transfer to the Ministry approved. Get to work as soon as you arrive in Helmer. Jay Cunningham. P.S. Your father is dead. More info when we meet. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with Beholder, the general idea, it's a, you're living in a dystopian society, of course, and you work for the, uh, the Ministry, I don't know, of Truth or whatever, and uh, it's your job to basically be a landlord, and you spy on all, the, all your tenants. You do that for the state. So uh, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty grim. Alright, so let's, uh, I guess we close this right here. Oh man, this is cool. Okay, so we can walk around with W, A, S, or I guess A and D is what we can do. What's up with this guy? Hi, I guess you're the one I'm waiting for. My name is George Himnitz. Oh, nice to meet you, Evan. You must be a big shot, Evan, right? Why? I've been with the Ministry for 8 years, 4 months, and 12 days. In that time, I've processed 18,342 applications, had 1,629 cups of coffee, and witnessed 284 incidents of civil disorder. Uh, real impressive. Now ask me, how many times I got sent to welcome a new employee on his first day? How many? Zero, Evan. Zilch! Not once in all those 3,052 days. So you've got to be a big deal, right? So, uh, I guess we'll just lie and say, you're right, I'm a big shot at the ministry. My last name's Redgrave, ever heard of it? Redgrave, as in Redgrave, Redgrave? Oh god, your father. Go on, Himnitz, what did you want to say? My deepest condolences. I can't imagine what you must be feeling right now. And to think I saw him just 58 hours and 23 minutes before he... before his death. We weren't that close. To be honest, we haven't talked for a decade. I didn't even know he worked here until yesterday. He didn't just work here. Your father was one of the most respected people in the ministry. One of the top management. And the most amazing thing is he never looked down on subordinates. He was an open and honest man. What happened? Did police make any headway? We aren't told much. So I only have a fact or two. The rest is gossip and fantasies of daft employees. What are the facts? 47 hours and 23 minutes ago, your father fell out of the ministry's top floor window. He fell down 37 floors, hit the pavement, and died on the spot. The law enforcement is working on finding out what happened and why. At least, that's what we're told. It's not much. Perhaps I have some important info on your father's death. But it's best to discuss it somewhere quiet after I instruct you and show you your desk. Because, you know, priorities. Ready for your first day at the Ministry? Let's go. Alright, we gotta follow Himnitz to our work area. Of course, Himnitz isn't moving. Oh, there we go. Note the statue of the wise leader. Can I move the camera? Oops, no, I skipped through the, the text. That statue weighs over 8,000 tons. To build it, we had to cancel the construction of eight kindergartens and a hospital. <laughs> Impressive, isn't it? You know, the bodies uh, kind of remind me of that game Gang Beasts. That's what I keep thinking of here. Your father died here on the cold, indifferent pavement. Now it's the favorite spot for gossipers. You can eavesdrop even though you're not likely to hear anything nice or useful. However, you should get used to it. Job specifics. No matter what position you're in, you've got to listen in, notice everything, and report to the higher-ups.
Uh, how do I listen? I click on them? Why is that tense? What happened here? I've been bringing reports to the Ministry of Distribution for three days. I've missed everything. They say Redgrave fell out a window yesterday. Do you know who he was? Of course I do! He was one of the bigwigs! How could something like that happen? No idea. You'd better not dwell on it. Okay, I guess we can eavesdrop on these people, too. It's incredibly obvious that I'm eavesdropping. Thorin saw him fall right from the top floor, he says. First, some shards of glass came raining down, then... Holy shit! Heads must have rolled, huh? No, Phil, all's quiet. They declared a mourning period as usual, and... That's even scarier, you know? Ministers don't just drop out of windows every day. There must be a reason. Keep it down. You want to take a little trip out the window, too? Don't say that. I just... I didn't mean... Let's get out of here. All right. Ministry's safety is a separate reason to be proud. The security guard is your best friend here, especially when you get along. Our guards have prevented 985 terrorist attacks this year alone. That's almost four attempts a day! So just in case, carry cash and don't ruin the stats, if you know what I mean. Oh look, someone got caught. <laughs> oh, they're beating the shit out of him. <laughs> oh man, that's creepy. Everybody's applauding. Alright, any prohibited item will be detected at once. We spent over 180 million on developing this technology. Though you can always bypass the frame, of course, if you butter up the security. I want to listen in. I forgot the access code to my terminal. What am I to do now? It escapes me. What if someone else remembers it? Ah, what a nuisance. So I guess whenever I'm like eavesdropping that little 10 second thing, I guess it's time that's going to pass. Because this would be our current time. Like I said before, there's 37 floors and twice that much underground, at least according to official data. We should always remember why we are here, and thanks to what, or who. Oh man, this is bad ass. This place is creepier than shit. That's where we hold general meetings. They're usually pretty mundane. People getting rewarded or reprimanded. Sometimes we also publicly condemn the actions of our neighbor states. Some smartass suggested we call those meetings five minutes of hatred. But as far as I know, got written up at once and could never suggest anything again. We also sing anthems sometimes. For example, this month I sang the main state anthem 426 times. This guy and his numbers, man. The ministry's first floor area is 440,000 square meters. Incredible, isn't it? 440,000 square meters of bureaucratic heaven. <laughs> See those lines? Every single person standing there has come here with a problem. Whether it's a real issue or not isn't up to us to decide. Our job is to send people to the right department. But it's important not to be an overachiever. We don't want people thinking the ministry doesn't have anything better to do. <laughs> so that's why bureaucratic shit always takes so long to get done. Oh, I always just thought it was because there was no fear of termination. This dude is a klutz, always drops stuff. I keep forgetting his name. If you sit on the bank long enough, the river might carry your enemy's corpse by one day. Oh, shit. We're good. We're good. All right. Oh, hey, what's going on here? Got some, like, uh, some donuts and shit? All right. And here's the common room. You'll be spending a lot of time here working or talking to co-workers. That's your desk. 
Take a look around. I'll give you your first assignment as soon as you're ready. Alright, so I need to look around first. How... Like, look around as in my... look around my desk? I, I don't know how to get over there. I guess I can just look around this room a little bit. Okay. All right, well, let's just talk to him. All right, have you had a look around? I'll show you to your workplace and show you the ropes. Do you already know your job duties? Let's listen to the briefing. Tell me about my job. So, we're in the reception room. People working in these booths assign visitors to ministries and offices. This is the front line of our bureaucratic defense. Only the chosen ones can pass it. Do you mean us? Do you think you've been chosen? People often consider themselves to be special, but in fact, we're all the same. Two square meters of skin, 206 bones, five liters of blood. Well, as long as you eat well and aren't an honorary blood donor. And eventually we all die. Except for the wise leader, of course. But before you die, you need to work hard. You'll be dealing with visitors, listening to their appeals, figuring out which forms they need and which ministries and available offices they have to go to. Oh my god. You've got to press the right buttons in the terminal, print out the referrals, and give them to visitors. Dude, this sounds like a real fucking job, man. This sucks. <laughs> okay, ask about the forms. What kind of forms? Currently, we have four types of forms. Request, complaint, denunciation, and information. You select one depending on the appeal. If you're having difficulties determining the appeal type, use the hints in the terminal. What ministries are there? In fact, there are many ministries established and abolished every day, and we never have time to update our register. Fortunately, the big six are always around. The Ministry of Order, Patriotism, Social Care, Labor, Culture and Sports, and Science and Technology. So just listen to the visitors carefully and decide which of these ministries to send them to. Okay, what offices are you talking about? Each ministry has several offices. You can see the weekly operating schedule of the offices on the right. Okay. If there are no available offices, reject the appeal. So, complete tutorial. Everything's clear so far, uh, in theory. Well, now let's see how much theory differs from practice. So let's start with the basics, the forms. Your task for today is to process five visitors. You'll get reputation points for meeting your quota. Reputation? I'd rather have money. Evan, in our ministry, reputation is much more valuable than money. Anyone can steal or find money, but reputation has to be earned. Without it, you can forget about promotions, rewards, and your whole damn career. If you don't have enough influence in the ministry, your colleagues won't even talk to you. What a good day. Oh, man, there's so much. Uh, how can I earn reputation? You get it for meeting your appeal processing quota. Don't let me down. Okay, that's right. Uh, okay, well, let's just, let's end the conversation. Okay, man. So, in the first game, you were a landlord. I don't know if we're going to become a landlord again in this game, or if this is just something different, but right now it's just like a total bureaucratic hell simulator. Okay. Welcome to the Patriot Terminal. There are five forms. I guess this will take two hours. Is that what that means? I don't know. Hello, I have the results of the latest patriotism poll. So that's going to be information, I'm guessing. I think, anyway. I guess so. Let's try that. Yeah! Patriotism. Select available office. Well, it's Monday. So... We have a bunch of them here. 78 is not on the list. Uh, 279. There we go. Okay, 279. Print. Hey, we got it all right. So this just went up. I guess that's money. Okay, in hospital number three, they give patients soup with rotten onions. You must help to stop this outrage. Well, that's a complaint. Uh, I guess social care would be what you call that, right? 
Uh, available office. It's kind of hard to see that with this thing. Can I close that? There we go. Uh, 301 is open. There you go. I get the hell out of here. Stop wasting my time. Visitor, I require assistance in arranging a rally dedicated to the upcoming birthday of our great wise leader. So that would be a request for patriotism. I'm guessing. Uh, and let's see what available offices we have. Don't Not 154. Not either of those or those. No, we don't have an available office for you, unfortunately. Because 279 is already in use. Well, that sucks for you. Mistake. There is an available office. I didn't see the available office. Oh, you know what? You can scroll down. Son of a bitch! I didn't know that. Okay. Hello, I spent three years knitting a portrait of our leader to decorate our entrance hall, and guess what? It was destroyed in less than a week. Well, I guess that's a complaint. I guess that would be order. Um, we do have 212 available for you. Okay, the ministry was wrong. It was supposed to be patriotism? Or whatever? Okay, I'm a technical consultant at a glass ceramics works. I want you to punish my wife, Grace Chilton, for altering my designs at night without my knowledge. Uh, so I'm guessing that's denunciation. And that would be for labor? I'm just guessing here. I obviously don't know. Uh, 467. And, of course, we got that wrong. Whatever. But, I mean, what does it matter if I get it wrong? Or you just send them from one office to another. Uh, I thought bureaucrats liked playing that game. Okay, good afternoon. I have a little kitty, Agatha. I let her out yesterday and someone tied a can to her tail. Oh, God, I guess that's a complaint. I'm assuming that that would be social care or something. Or would that be order? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on here. Uh, 301. Hey, we got it right. Alright, we're done, finally. Alright, let's go back to Hymnets. What a good day. Give performance report. I've met the quota, what's next? Great, keep it up. Actually, I have nothing more to tell you about your work. You're on your own now. Get settled in, meet your co-workers, and earn reputation. If you keep at it and work hard eight hours a day, you could become the boss and get to work twelve hours a day. Isn't it exciting? I'll keep that in mind. Thank you, George. I'll mark in the journal that you had your briefing. All the required documents are in the cart near the table. Take them to Magda Rakovich, the boss's secretary. Uh, are in the cart near the table. Okay. I'll wait for you by the statue. We have more to talk about. Okay, take the documents from the cart. I'm guessing it's that. Report. Signed, George Hymnitz. Okay, do I, like, drag it over? There we go. Give Magda Rakovich the documents. Is that her? Nope. That's Emma Hazer. Whoa, she looks kind of frightening. <laughs> All right. What do you want? <laughs> I don't know if that's the best voice for her, but whatever. Hello. That's not a very respectful way to address an older woman now, is it? I'm sorry? What do you want? George Hymnitz asked me to give you these documents. You didn't look inside, I hope. I'm not interested. I didn't ask if you were interested. Reading sealed papers like these when you don't have top secret clearance could cost you your freedom. Or your life. Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. But I prefer not to stick my nose into other people's business. I don't care where you stick any of your extremities. 
There are rules, regulations, and instructions that must be observed if you want to stay in the Ministry for more than a day. If you make mistakes, nothing will save you. Not even your name. What's wrong with my name? You're still here! Don't try my patience. Sorry, I'm already leaving. Well, she's, uh, she's a real charmer. So can we get to the street from here, or do we have to go backwards? Uh, I probably don't want to knock on that, considering she's, like, someone's secretary. I really love the, the soundtrack. The music is excellent so far. So we gotta go back through here and we gotta meet him that's on the street by the statue. That's fairly intimidating. the art style. It's really cool. And just the general atmosphere is very, very cool. Very creepy. Hymnets, where the hell are you? Can I go towards the statue or no? I guess not. I guess he's going to be further down. There he is. What a good day. Evan, it's about your father. The things that happened to him were just terrible. I have to tell you something. Go on. At most, 20 people in our whole country know this information. I'm taking a huge risk divulging, divulging these details to you. So I do have to ask you. Not a word to anyone, okay? Let's have it. As you know, I was appointed to the position floor inspector several years ago. But at the same time, I was enlisted to work in Department 6. Department 6? That's a myth. No thinking person really believes in it. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Department 6 is considered to be a myth because that's the way their leader wanted it. More precisely, that's how your father wanted it. My father was the head of Department 6? And what were you doing there? Heimdall, a secret project helmed by your father, was launched at that time. That's how we met. I was always good with numbers, so I was invited on board to assess statistical errors and their potential consequences. He didn't talk much about himself, but mentioned his son several times. And his eyes lit up when he did. He was proud of you, trust me. What else did my father say about me? We didn't communicate for the last 10 years. He mentioned that was no longer that he was no longer in touch with you, but always hoped that someday you'd come join him. Why do you think so? He wrote you a letter a few days before his death. He must have known what was going to happen to him. A letter? Do you have it with you? No, I keep it at home. I didn't expect you to appear so soon. I'll give it to you tomorrow and tell you everything I know. Somewhere quiet. Thank you, George. I don't know how to thank you. Don't mention it, Evan. Your father was kind to me. This is the least I can do for you. Okay, what kind of project was Heimdall? Not here, not now. It's too dangerous. We have to find a quiet place on the right time. How about tomorrow? I'll tell you everything and you can decide what to do with the information. Alright, say goodbye. Thanks for telling me about my father, George. We'll have time to talk more. See you tomorrow. Alright, it appears we're in our building, or is this actually our room? Well, I guess this is our room. Is somebody, like, knocking? Okay, I guess we'll open it. James Cunningham. I'm glad to see you, Evan. Do you remember me? 
Nope. I don't remember you. I'm an old friend of your father's, Evan. We were friends, and we worked side by side for many years. I was a frequent visitor to your home, don't you remember? Your mother used to make fantastic rhubarb pies. She passed away a long time ago. I know, I was at her funeral. And at your father's funeral, too. Why didn't you tell me so I could say goodbye to him? I'm afraid your father's death is a complicated case. Someone at the top decided to close it quickly. That's why I came to you. We need to discuss your work. How's your first day going? Everything's changing quickly. Just a week ago, I was planning to visit my father and introduce him to my family. In the end, I was late, even for his funeral. I understand, Evan. Did you ever patch things up with him? No, I was late for that, too. I'm sorry. If I'd known it was that serious, I'd have arranged your appointment here much earlier. So it was you who arranged this transfer to the Ministry? It was indeed, though not because of your good looks, as I'm sure you've guessed. Are you here alone? Where's your family? All is well, they're with Miriam's parents in Reading. Reading? That place is full of coal mines and some pretty aggressive workers. Not the best place for a woman and her child. I realize that. I have to get the... to the apartment, or I have to get the apartment ready for them as soon as possible. Okay, so let's ask about the father's death. James, do you know anything about my father's death? Not much. The floor managers were involved somehow, that's all I know. And I can't conduct a full investigation. But why? After all, investigations are what you and your division do. Evan, I'm the only insider, or the only insider I had in the ministry was your father. Clearly, he discovered something very important and got taken out. All the evidence disappears if we just walk in the front door. So, an investigation into the ministry and the investigation of your father's death are the same thing. Uh, I guess we'll offer help. I want to help you. Happy to hear it. Find some dirt on these bastards and find out who's responsible for your father's death. I'll ensure they're met with the appropriate punishment. Where should I begin? I'm no detective. Your main task is to listen to what they say, write everything down, and ask the right questions. Then everything will work out. Let's begin with Pete Ferguson, your immediate superior. That wretch loves only money. You'll see for yourself. And remember, the higher up you go, the more chances you'll have to make a difference. Don't miss those chances. Okay, I'll see what I can do. Call me as soon as you learn something. Uh, I guess I'm not going to tell him about him. It's... Uh, ask about the apartment. What kind of apartment is it? It's a typical middle-class official's apartment. I arranged it for you. Do I own this apartment? No, Evan. You can live in it for as long as you work for the ministry. You still have to pay the bills. Otherwise, you'll be thrown out onto the street. As an IAD secret agent, you have to play by the rules to avoid unwanted attention. I'll pay your bills today, but from tomorrow on, you'll have to take care of them yourself. The Ministry of Housing is extremely strict, as you know. Even a minor debt leads to arrest. Respect for labor, communal property, and all that stuff. Moreover, there are 603 people in line for the apartment. I checked. Okay, what about my father's property? It's been seized while the investigation's ongoing. You know, Evan, I wouldn't get my hopes up. And the apartment where we lived back when my mother was still alive. I'm afraid there are already new tenants there. Sorry about that. Damn vultures. Alright, in conversation. Alright. So there are some things to check out in here, but unfortunately we have reached the end of this episode. So here's the deal, everybody. I was just going to do a one-shot of this because I don't really know how long this beta is, but it looks like there's more to go. So if you guys want to see a second episode, you got to let me know in the comments. Hit like and subscribe and then say, hey, Odin, you dumbass, do another episode of this. And if you tell me, uh, then we'll do it. But if no one's really interested, then uh, we probably won't. But I am already hooked on this damn game, and uh, I need to go back and play the first one since it's already in my Steam library and I never played it. But yeah, just let me know if you want to see some more, but that's it for now, so thanks for hanging with me, I always appreciate it, and we may see you next time for some more Beholder 2 beta.